My name is Dean Didis. I represent a company, Total Merchant Services. Uh, we process credit and debit card activity. Um, a, a couple of differences, though, between us and most other card processing companies. First of all, um, there is no cancellation fee or contract term with the company that I represent. Uh, we feel that our business model really holds us to a higher level of accountability because of that. If we can't provide our merchants with exceptionally uh, competitive rates or great customer service, our merchants can leave without penalty at any time. Typically that is not the case uh, in the uh, merchant processing industry where merchants typically have to sign a three, four, five year contract uh, if they are dissatisfied. There could be uh, cancellation penalties anywhere from $300 to several thousand dollars. Um, the other distinguishing characteristic between the company that I represent is that if our merchants need equipment, we provide that equipment at no additional charge. Wow. Why that is important is because, again, my experience is that a lot of car processing companies will engage uh, merchants in ridiculous leases or the purchasing of the equipment. We don't do any of that. And, and the equipment that we provide our merchants with is state of the art, okay? So you'll be able to process payments with the new Apple Pay technology. Uh, it also incorporates the new EMV chip technology, uh, which will be the technology, car processing technology of the, of the near future. Actually, when, when I walk into a business to determine whether they're a good candidate or not, um, really is a function of maybe just basically two things, okay? See, number one, whether they have car processing capabilities, so they could perhaps use my service, or number two, that they don't have car processing capabilities, in which case they should consider having car processing capabilities to increase their business. Uh, other than that, um, it, it's difficult to ascertain whether they can utilize my services. For example, yesterday I had um, an appointment at a salon, and on their terminal, it says no debit cards. You know, and, and, and unfortunately, this merchant isn't taking advantage of the least expensive processing solution for a merchant. Debit cards are, are, are the least expensive car to process. Our rates are under 1%. Uh, and, and so by putting no debit cards on the terminal, uh, people that may have debit cards are reluctant to use them. They're going to use credit cards. As it turned out, the reason why they don't accept credit cards is because they thought that they needed a pin-based debit. Okay, they needed an external, they needed an external pin pad in order to process debit cards. And that's, it's, 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 it's actually misinformation on the part of a merchant. Briefly speaking, there, there are two kinds of debit. There's pin-based debit and signature debit. Pin-based debit means that the uh, customer inputs a four-digit pin code, and that's basically the signature. Signature debit is exactly what it is. Instead of the, the customer basically signs a receipt. Uh, we are very cost competitive. Uh, we have to be cost competitive. If we weren't cost competitive, like I said, our merchants can leave without penalty at any time, which, which again, like I said, that holds us to a higher level of accountability. Because if, if we don't provide our merchants with exceptionally competitive rates, they can leave without penalty at any time. That's not the case of 90% of the merchants out there that, are in, that, that, that have contracts for their uh, processing activity. Okay, so the question is, what are the guaranteed built-in mechanisms that, that we have to offer to um, reduce the amount of hacking or uh, card compromising capabilities? That's the reason why we're promoting this. That's the reason why we're, we're, we're actually offering this new technology um, with the, the equipment that we have. With the new uh, terminals, being able to process with Apple Pay, for example. Why is that a better solution than uh, the way that we typically process cards? Because 
through Apple Pay, for example, and, and because our particular terminal can, terminate, can, can uh, communicate with uh, Apple Pay customers, the, the customer is actually authorizing that transaction with their, with their fingerprint, okay? So that increases the, uh, the integrity of the, um, of the transaction. With the new EMV chip technology, which we, we don't have right now, but we will have in the future, that is also a mechanism to uh, prevent um, uh, hacking and uh, a breach of security with regard to uh, car processing capabilities. So um, that's the reason why it's a good idea to update your equipment to prepare yourself for technology to inhibit um, you know, the, the, the kind of security issues that we currently have. Uh, you know, the fact that a lot of small businesses are using Square. What, what, what would be the difference between using Square and our card processing capabilities? Square charges a flat rate of 2.75%, okay? So they don't differentiate between a debit transaction, a qualified credit transaction, a bid qualified credit transaction, and a non-qualified credit transaction. The reality of the situation is that 60%, statistically speaking, 60% of all transactions are debit transactions. Our debit rate is under a percent. So if you're paying, if you're using Square to process your transactions and the customer is paying with a debit card, you're paying about three and a half times the amount to process that same transaction through Square as it would be through us. If you're a small business, you're doing 500, maybe $1,000 a month in processing. Square makes sense, okay? But if you're doing a couple of thousand dollars or more a month in card processing activity, there are much more cost-effective means of doing that than using Square. Because again, Square is charging a flat rate of 2.75%. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm glad that you... What, so what do I do when I'm not selling? Um, well, I, I, a singer and songwriter, I do some performing. Uh, I'm, I'm actually studying the guitar right now. Uh, I've, I've actually been studying gu the guitar for a while. I uh, took lessons at the Old Town School of Folk Music for a number of years, and I'm currently taking private lessons to kind of focus on uh, more improvisational uh, techniques and, 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 and honing in on more specific interests that I have with regard to the guitar. Um, I also play the piano, but my, my, since the guitar is a portable instrument uh, and it's the instrument that I, I do my songwriting with, that's the instrument that I've been focusing on uh, lately. In addition, to, I, do, I do work out uh, almost every day, but in terms of my passion, my music is certainly my passion. Just a little phrase, I don't know how, how important or significant it is, but you can't be everything to everyone. You know, so, I mean, that kind of... That, 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 that kind of eases rejection, you know, uh, in, in, in certain circumstances. So you just, you just can't be everything to everyone.